Today I want to talk about the Sony FX30 and what I think about it after using it for the past five months. Let's get started. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Wayne. I want to talk about my Sony FX30. I acquired this camera back in November last year. After seeing the presentation and all the features that it had for video, I fell in love with this camera. The active stabilization was one of the big features that I wanted from this camera, plus the fact that it was a nice, small, compact unit and light. In addition, they also sold an audio handle, which for me, I thought it would be a good thing to have with this camera as well. Now I've shot Nikon for 20 some years, well, close to 20 years. And over the time I've used the cameras, I've always loved them. I like how they feel, how they operate, the menu systems, all of that. If you watch my previous videos, you've seen me talk about the fact that I've had some challenges with the Sony camera. And in the beginning, I did a lot of videos just trying to test it out to see if I really liked it. I know I wanted to keep it, but you know, I, I put it up against the Nikon to see what it was like to see if it was really something that I could use. The size, perfect. The weight, also on a perfect side. Now granted, I started shooting photos with this camera and I love the fact that I could shoot photos. Granted, it's not, you know, multiple shots, it's a single shot. So that, there's something to be desired there for a hybrid camera, but the main focus was video. So what do I think now that I've used the video features? If you watch some of my videos, you've seen that I've tried this camera at nighttime, daytime, and it actually performs very well. A bit of specs. It is an APS-C sensor-based camera, but Sony branded it as one of their cinema cameras. And as a cinema camera, you expect to have really good video performance out of it. In the first couple of weeks since the release, there were a lot of videos that were coming out about the fact that it wasn't very good in low light, that the dual-based ISO system didn't work or didn't work well. So, you know, people were testing it and not liking it. And, you know, for me, I figured maybe, you know, they weren't doing something right because Sony wouldn't lie to us and say that as a dual-based ISO system. Me being a tech nerd that I am, because I did come from the tech field, I did some research on the camera and found out about how to use the dual base ISO system. And since then, I can tell you this, my video production has skyrocketed. And I say skyrocketed, granted it's still just, you know, normal YouTube videos and somebody's talking head things, but to get a better understanding of how it works and using the Cine EI features, wow. I've been learning how to grade and to color correct, and I've been getting some pretty good footage out of this camera. A lot of the stuff you see with me sitting in front of the camera talking is usually done with the FX30. Hang on a second. Let's bring her over. So this is the FX30 with the audio handle. This is my normal setup. And usually when I'm shooting with it, you know, one of the things that I thought about that I would actually use was the uh, S to the tone function. Didn't know anything about color grading, well, basic stuff, but I didn't need to do that for most of my stuff. For Nikon, I basically, you know, output to the Ninja, let the Ninja handle all that stuff, and boom, great looking image, 10 bit, fantastic stuff. But I wanted to take it a little bit further after I saw what the functionality of this camera was. And of course, being new to Sony, there's a lot of things I didn't know about it. You've heard me complain about the color. Straight out of the camera, I noticed that the blue was a bit off and I did a video about that as well. But after I got to learn the camera and learn about how to, first of all, set the white balance correctly and um, color grade, things started to look better. Utilizing it in low light, because I do know it's a low, it's a APS-C sensor and the low light performance usually isn't the greatest on these cameras. But, you know, Sony said that with the base ISO of 800 and the 2500 for lower light situations, it should work pretty well. In, of course, situations where you are managing the light. But I've tested it on the streets to see what it was like, and it worked really, really well. That's when I started getting impressed with this camera. 
I decided I wanted to push myself to learn more about how the S-Log feature works. And I started to shoot a lot with it, a lot of testing stuff just to see how it worked and grade in. And there are times when, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've been fooling around with, I don't post. You experimented, it's just for your own way of learning stuff. And man, yeah, I messed up some stuff, but you know, as soon as I got better with it and learned it more, this became my favorite. I do have the A7R5 as well, but when it comes to video, yeah, this whole setup here with the handle, the daily microphone, it's great. The lens I, I love on this camera is the 15 millimeter 1.4G. You know, when I'm sitting like in a hotel room recording stuff, I can be like right up on the camera and the microphone, you know, right in front of my face, I can pick stuff up. It's fantastic. If I need to get closer, I do have the 11 millimeter 1.8. So again, it all depends on like how loud is a fan, the AC system, how loud is the sound from around, you know, the room or outside. These are things I take into consideration when I'm filming. And it seems as though you just get in the room and start filming. If your mic is picking up all the background noise, it's a pain in the neck to uh, adjust in post. So that's, that's something to deal with. So let's take a look at this camera for a moment. You've probably seen a lot of videos on it and you've already known what this looks like. And you're wondering, you know, should you get one of these things? If you're someone who's been on the fence about getting this camera, but your main purpose of shooting, get this out of my face here, is video. This camera is really good when it comes to video. If you don't want to grade it, just put it in S and tones or want to pick your profile that suits your taste and shoot. As you grow and you want to learn more, then you can go into the S-Log modes and then you can adjust that so you can start, you know, tweaking to see what you can get out of it. A lot of people say, you know, it would be better if you shoot multiple photos. Sure. If you're looking for that hybrid camera and you want to shoot photo photos, if you're looking for a hybrid camera and you want to shoot more photos, this is not going to be the thing for you. I've seen videos out there saying it's a great YouTube camera. I would agree. The videos that comes out of it is great. With the release of the new ZV-E1, there's some features in there that are just like next level when it comes to a one-man shop shooting kind of thing. And this is not going to replicate that at all. It's, this is not that kind of camera. This is more about you controlling it and you shoot it. And let's be honest, if you're a budding filmmaker and you want to learn about how to use these kind of cameras, you know, this is a good way to start. Enjoying the content? Love what you've seen so far? Find the information useful? Okay, wonderful. Now, next question. Are you subscribed? No? Oh, come on, get subscribed. A lot of you watching are subscribed, but most of you are not. So while the channel is growing, I'd like to count on your support to help me to grow even more. So if you're coming back and watching the video, or if this is your first time, hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. All right, not going to take up any more of your time. Let's get back to the video. So let me tell you about some of the things that I really enjoy with this camera. When I take it out to film, I like the fact that it's light. The lenses that I got for it was 11 millimeter, the 15 millimeter, and also the 16 to 35 f4, which is a full frame lens, but it has the equivalent of about 24 to 50 or 55, somewhere around there. That's not a bad range to use. Why did I choose f4 lens? Because for most of the stuff that I do out in the daylight, that one will work perfectly. When it comes to low light, there's 11 millimeter um, 1.8. You know, you're indoors, talking across the table to somebody, or you're just inside a room, you want a wider perspective. That one comes in handy. The 15 millimeter, also great lens, that's 1.4. And a lot of the low light stuff that I've seen, I have been filmed with that lens. So now that I've covered the things that I like about the camera, let me talk about some of the things that I wish Sony could have done differently. 
With the new releases, the a 7 r 5 for example, with that beautiful screen back there and the multi-angle flexibility, I would have loved if they have basically put that screen on this camera. Why? Well, with this camera being without an EVF, having a much better screen or bigger screen as well would really help out a lot. The body's on the small side, I get it. It's a three inch screen. I would have wished for a 3.2, four inch, you know? When I look at some of the buttons on the back of the camera here and like what they have up top for controls, some of these things could actually be put inside of a screen. You probably heard me talk about a bigger screen in a lot of my videos and that comes from utilizing an iPhone to shoot. When you start using that a lot and you realize a lot of functionalities are built in there, you have what? Volume buttons and a power button and that's it. Everything else is all on the screen and it works well. A lot of these other buttons, you know, once you set them, you're not doing anything else with them when you're recording. You can touch the screen and go into features while the camera is running and make adjustments there. Why not? So if they can move some of these things off the back of the screen, and let me turn this around for a second here. These buttons are, sorry, these buttons on this side here, you know, the wheel and all that, for ISO control, you can stick that inside the screen. And, and I think that makes it easier. I've utilized a Sony phone, where is it? It's right here. Having things on the screen where you can slide up and down and select your ISO and show the speed and so on. Why not? I mean, granted you have, you know, hard controls here on the camera to do that stuff, but why couldn't it put some of these functions inside the screen and get rid of all sort of stuff on the side here? You know, as far as the, um, what do we call it on the photo side? It's a selector, multi-selector, where you can move up, down, left and right. They've put that on the top of the camera, which is kind of cool. You know, for video, you don't hold the camera the same, especially since it doesn't have an EVF. You're, you're more holding it this way. I'm just sure this way. You're doing it this way. You're not having it up to your face. You're looking down at it. So, so why not have everything inside the screen? For what you have up your ISO button, your white balance and so on, that's really all you need. And let me put my glasses on for a second. Shutter, zebra control display. Yeah, function button magnification, you can put that stuff in the screen, seriously. And when you hold it from where, from where the buttons are on the side there, if you can, if I can hold this as you can see, these controls here, if you got rid of them, you have a little bit more space for the screen. I think this body, if they made it a little bit taller, they make the screen a little bit wider. We're talking roughly a four inch maybe a five inch screen. You know, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K and 6K cameras with a five inch screen, and it works very well. Maybe they don't have to have a five inch, maybe a four inch. Why not? It's a video camera, right? So if you don't want to carry around an external monitor and put your bigger ones built into the camera, I think that'd be perfect. Ergonomics wise, the grip could be better in my mind, but it's not that bad based upon how I hold the camera when I'm walking around with it. And if it's on the tripod, it, it, you know, not a big deal. If you use the handle again, also not a big deal. So those are the things that, the main things I would say that I would wanna have changed on this camera in the next version. Or in anyone who's doing one of these small cinema type cameras, put a bigger screen on it. I mean, come on. You guys have been utilizing screens of 3.2 inch or 3 inch screen for years. Well, and Sony side, it's been this really low resolution screen. And now they finally, you know, bumped it up to was it 2. million dots, 2.36 million, I think, on this one, 2.1 on the A7R5. Yeah, we, we like to have better screen because that's what you're using to interface with the world, especially on this one. So that's my rant on that one. But what do you guys think? Would you prefer a bigger screen on these video-based cameras? Let me know in the comments. So after about five to six months using this camera, I can honestly say that I like it. I really like it. If you've been following my channel, you've seen that I've picked up a Nikon Z8 and I traded in my E7R5 on that one. That tells you something. While that camera was good and really great on the photography side and some really great features on it, 
the Nikon is a more balanced camera. It is heavier, but the FX30 to me is a lighter camera when I want to take it around and film. It has a flip out screen that I can use. So there's some pluses there that makes me want to keep this one over the A7R5. The A7R5 is not a bad camera at all and the video is great. What I would have wished though is that Sony would have made the FX30 had better white balance to match the A7R5. And also the screen on the back. That would have been a really killer deal. Hopefully in the future, Sony will do this. I think they left some things out of this camera for price point reasons, don't know why. But again, if the white balance is as good as A7R5, this camera will be like a really, really killer performer. That means less color grading at the end. You can tweak as much as you want, but when you have all stuff to deal with the white balance issues, yeah, that's a pain in the neck. And I know some people are gonna say you can use a gray card or a color checker and set that up, but not everybody's doing that. And if white balance can be great out of the box, less time in your workflow makes everything a lot better. Let me know what you guys think. Those of you who have bought the camera, those of you who are looking forward to picking one up and are interested in information about it, you can say this, it's great. I like it. I did keep it over the A7R5 overall because even though I have to do some editing, I still like the fact that it has the video features and the XLR handle, which makes it to me a better cinema camera, a better video camera to use. All right, guys, I'm gonna close out. Thanks for watching the video. And again, if you're interested in this FX30, look at my links below, click on it, and go purchase one. Take care.